few weeks ago I received this question. Can we use group by with multiple tables? To which the answer is yes, we definitely can. And over the next few minutes, we're going to create some Excel formula magic to do things you never thought possible with group by. So if you're ready, let's get started. There are two ways to have multiple tables. We can either combine tables vertically by stacking additional records, or we can combine horizontally by looking up fields from another table. We're going to cover both in this video. We'll start with a basic example to illustrate how it works, and then with the second example, we'll push things to a whole new level. So let's start with our basic example. Here we have our example data. We have a table called data one, which contains a product, region, and value columns. We then also have another table called data two, and this contains data in a different layout. It contains region, size, product, units, and value. And we are going to combine both of these tables together in our group by. Not only that, but we want to group by owner. However, the owner field doesn't exist in the data one or data two tables. So we are going to combine all three of these tables together to create our group by. To get the owner for each value, we first of all need to create a full list of regions. To do this, we can use the vStack function. The first array that we want to stack will be the region column from our data one table, and then we can stack onto that the region column from the data two table. When we calculate that, we now get a list of all of our regions on a row by row basis across both tables. The fact that our tables have different columns doesn't matter because using vStack, we can select the correct columns that we want to include. Now that we've got our list of regions, we now want to perform an X lookup to get the owner for each of those regions. I will edit the formula, and at the start, I will add X lookup, opening bracket. The lookup value will be the result of the vStack function. For the lookup array, we want to look up the region column from the owner's table. Then for the return array, we want to return the owner from the owner's table. When we calculate that, we now get the owner for each row in both of our tables. And this is what we are going to use inside the group by function. So let's edit our formula, and at the start, I will add group by. For our row fields argument, we are going to use the result of our X lookup function. Now, the important thing is that our row fields and our values must contain the same number of items. So row fields has 18 rows, and if we stack our values together, they will also have 18 rows. To do that, we're going to use the vStack function again, and we want to stack the value from our data one table, and below that, we want to stack the value from our data two table. That now creates the array for our values argument. The next argument of group by is function. This is the calculation that we want to perform. In this scenario, we're just going to use a sum function. Then we can close that bracket and calculate. And as you can see, we now have a group by that contains the owner and the value. Even though our records were across multiple tables and our owners were in a separate table. Now, the great thing about group by is that it is dynamic and it auto recalculates when data changes. So if I change one instance of Giles to Mark, our group by now updates accordingly. And there we go. That's how to use group by with multiple tables, but we're not done yet. That was just scratching the surface. So buckle up because we're about to go stratospheric with our next example. For our second example, we're going to use group by to create a column for product, a column for owner, but also a column for the source that will indicate whether the data came from data one or data two. So let's start here in cell L5 by typing equals let opening bracket. Let allows us to assign a calculation to a name, and then we can use that name again later on in our calculation. The first name that we want to create is 
region field. And this will be based on the VStack of the region from the data one table and the region from the data two table. The next name that we want to create is product field. This is based on the VStack of our product from data one and our product from data two. Next, let's calculate our owner field. Based on our previous example, we saw that we could use the X lookup function. For the lookup value, we want to use the region field that was calculated previously. For our lookup array, we want the region column from the owners table. And then for the return array, we want the owner from the owners table. For the next calculation, we want to calculate whether the value comes from the data one table or the data two table. And we're going to call this source field. We will need to stack these two calculations together. Therefore, we will start with VStack. Here's the interesting thing. The source field doesn't exist anywhere. So if we want to use it in our group by function, we need to create it from nothing. And for that, we're going to use the expand function. I will enter expand, open in bracket. The first argument of expand is the array. This is the initial value that we want to use. And we want to use the name of our table, which is in cell B3. The next argument is rows. This is how many rows we want in the output of this array. We want the number of rows in our data one table. The next argument is columns. We only want a single column, so I'll enter one. Then the final argument of expand is pad width. So we're going to create an array that contains the number of rows in data one. The first row is equal to B3, and we want every other row to be equal to B3 as well. So that will be our pad width value. So because our data one table has 12 rows, this will create an array of 12 rows where each value is the word data one. Now we know in our example, we have two tables. Therefore, we need to use another expand function. For the array value, we want cell B19. For the rows argument, we want the number of rows in data two. For the columns argument, we want one. And then for the pad with argument, we want cell B19 once again. So this means that our source field now displays data one or data two, depending on where the value comes from. Now we can combine all of these fields together into a single array. We're going to create a name called row fields. And for this, we want to use the H stack of our product field, our owner field, and our source field. Now let's calculate the array that we want to use for our values. I'll create a name called value fields, and that will be the V stack of the value from data one and the value from data two. We now have the two arrays that we need for our group by. So let's create a new name called result. This will use the group by function. For the row fields argument, we want to use our row fields name. Then for the values, we want to use our value fields name. Then we come to the function. And again, let's use sum in this example. Finally, the last argument for let is the value that we want to return. And we want to return the value of our result. When we calculate that, we now get the product, the owner, the source, and the value, even though each of these columns came from different tables and source didn't even exist as a column at all. And that is it. That is how we can combine any values we like into the group by function. We just need to ensure that we maintain the relative position of each row and that our arrays have the same number of rows for the row fields and the values arguments. If you want to know more about working with dynamic array functions and create these types of calculations yourself, then check out our Excel Academy. It has everything you need to truly master Excel. And then if you want to know more about group by and how to use it for actual versus budget analysis, why not check out this video next? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.